Nottingham Castle sound. Strange sound. Though the guards are asleep, the prisoners keep up the sound. Strange sound. They wake from their beds, shake the sleep from their heads like bats from hell. They run to the cell, for the noises they hear are the voices they fear. And they're running and running, cause the laughter is coming from King John and the Sheriff of Nottingham. String up this pair. Who strung them up? Who let them to rot like a pair of dead ducks in this horrible spot? I think he means me. Who could it be? Yes, it's definitely me. Who could it be? Have my merry men, of course. revolutionaries. People are supposed to be terrified of us. You lot wouldn't frighten the Nottingham East Under Seven's ballet class. Now try again, and this time make it blood-curdling. I think it would sound better if we all faced the front, don't you, little Ron? And where are we going, Robin? That was too, you know, scary. Too scary? Wait, you three. Any minute now, King John and the Sheriff of Nottingham will escape from their cell. And you know what'll happen then, don't you? The entire Norman army will be scouring Sherwood Forest with extremely sharp swords in order to give a man called Robin an extremely close haircut. And if you're not fit, and if you're not able to fight for your life, you'll end up as dead as this tree. A tree's alive. That's not the point. Little Ron, what are you doing? Ronnie! Very good. Nice to see that some of us have got more important things to do than worry about what the best dressed freedom fighters are wearing in the discotheque this autumn, isn't it, Robin? Hoya! Well done, little Ron. And some of us oh, are of the ridiculous opinion that when a Norman battle axe is slicing your head off, it's just a tiny bit irrelevant what colour your hat is. Hoya! Oh. Well done, little Ron. Right, Woodcraft. Rabies, climb this rope, please. Now listen, all of you. If we're going to avoid the sheriff and his men, we must learn the ways of the forest. We must learn from the gentle deer. Sorry. We must move through the forest quickly and quietly, sensitive to any sound, hiding amongst the shadows at the first sign of danger. And remember, the forest is your friend. If you learn to love it, it will love you in return. Oh, oh. oh what's the use? Why as you can, men. This Robin Hood is devilish cunning. He'll have lookouts posted everywhere. One false move and we're dead. Who? What was that? I tripped over my sword. The point got stuck in my tights. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, no! I've laddered them. That tree looks like the sort of thing a bandit would hide behind. We'll creep up on it. But we've been creeping up on trees all afternoon. And bushes, and shrubs, and hedgehogs. Promised me Mum I'd be home by tea time, and she won't start without me. And I fear, Gary, that your mother is going to be a very hungry woman. Wait a minute. What is that? It's your finger. Yes, Graham, thank you very much. It is my finger. And what is that at the end of it? Your fingernail. Thank you, Gary. Now, if we could leave anatomy for the moment and move on to nature study, you will see that at the end of my fingernail there is a sapling. And what is that hanging from it? Uh, a broken twig. Correct. And what does a broken twig tell you? That the sapling has hurt itself. Oh, no, Gary. The sapling has not hurt itself. Someone has hurt the sapling. Just like I'm going to hurt you in a minute. Very recently, someone has walked past here, they've brushed past the sapling, and they've left a clue for us to follow. In other words, Robin Hood has been this way. Come on. Never mind. You'll be better soon. And finally, the bow and arrow. Now, you may find this incredibly hard to believe, 
But an experienced archer can split a tiny stick like this with one single arrow. I can do that. Can you? Yeah, look. Well, thank you for the demonstration, Barrington, but actually what I had in mind was firing from over there. Robin? Uh, no way. Sorry. Can't. Can't, Robin? There's no such word as can't, is there? You serious? Now, pull back the bow, keeping the elbows and wrists parallel to the ground. Have you got that? Yes. Check that the thumb holding the bowstring is adjacent to the right ear. Yes. And that the flight of the arrow is nestling comfortably in the right palm. It's gone. My arrow's disappeared. One minute it was here and the next it had completely vanished. It's absolutely amazing. What was that? A very noisy squirrel? No, it was not a very noisy squirrel. It was the cry of a human being who's just received a serious injury. Oh, no! How did that happen? Your arrow stuck into him. If you fire arrows into the air, they do tend to stick into people. Well, how awful! I, I'd better go and say something, hadn't I? Yes. Let's just hope he's not too badly hurt. Oh, I'm dying, Graham. Graham, take my hand. Before I go, tell me the truth. I was a good master, wasn't I? Well, not really, sir. Well, not a good master, perhaps, but I was fair, wasn't I? Well, actually, no, sir. I was only saying to Gary yesterday how completely unfair you are, yes, sir. Yes, yes, all, all right. And bossy. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. I'm at death's door, you know. I'm about 30 seconds away from a pair of wings and a flipping great gold harp. And what do you do? Do you ease my way through the pearly gates with a few well-chosen, if slightly inaccurate, words of appreciation? No, you tell me I'm the worst, the most disgusting, most absolutely... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm standing up, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving around! I'm alive! Hang on. Where, 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 where's the arrow? It's over here, sire. Who did that? Come on! Who was it? Look! When a perfectly innocent passerby is walking through these woods, he does not expect some oaf, some stupid, stupid little boy, to act oh so clever with his stupid friends by showing off with a bow and arrow. Because let me tell you, that hat is very special to me because it was given to me by a very special person, my Auntie Marjorie. Now, if the boy who did this has got any guts at all, I want him to own up right now. Because if he doesn't, then everyone in this entire forest is going to have to stay behind until he does. Sorry, sir. It was me, sir. Can I have my arrow back, please? Come here. Bend over. Right. Cut his head off. What? Cut his head off. But I haven't got any scissors. Use your sword. Oh. Wait! Go away, please, little girl. This is for over 18s only. I said wait! Now listen. In a moment, I'm going to get cross, and when I get cross, I can be pretty ugly. Save your words, Sheriff. You're surrounded. One word from me and my highly trained team of commandos. Face the front, please, little Ron. We'll bury two foot of very sharp wood into your rather scrawny bodies. Yeah, and fire arrows at you. You think I'm frightened of that pathetic lot? Look at this, your brilliant shooting. My pet gerbils are better shot than you lot. Guards, hack him to pieces. Ah! He, he did it on purpose. What? That shot. He did it on purpose. It was a warning to make you frightened of us so you'd give us all your money so we could buy stuff. Rubbish. He couldn't hit a rhinoceros at two paces. No. He's a brilliant shot, aren't you, Robin? Well, I'm, I'm not sure, really. I just line my ear up with my thumb and the back of my elbow like this when... Wait a minute. Did you say Robin? 
Yes, and I had to make sure it was in my hand, so I opened my hand to have a You're look. You're him, aren't you? You're the one who broke into the castle. Yes, but I didn't mean you to call... You broke down the cell door. Yes, but I paid And you any... hung us up and tortured us with feathers. Well... You're... Robin Hood. Robin Hood? Robin Hood. Well, my name is Robin, but my surname. Have mercy, please, I beg you. Take all my money. Well, stupidly, I hadn't actually brought my wallet with me, but take all their money. I haven't got any. Get your purse out. There's nothing in it. Open it up. Uh, it's stuck together with that really strong glue. I said open it up. What's in it? Nothing. Oh, except my sausage dog. It's a little... Lucky silver sausage dog called Herman, and he bounces up and down on an elastic band. Oh, let's see. Hand it over. Can I hand over the purse, too? Why? Because it's Herman's little house, and he'll be cold without his little house. You can hand over his garage and his back garden if you like. Just hurry. Well, sorry to have uh, taken up so much of your time. Very, very nice to have met you, and uh, thanks for the demonstration of sharpshooting. It was very, very, very impressive. Um, bye-bye. He's right, you know. It was a pretty impressive piece of shooting. Bye, Herman. Oh, it's all right. You keep him. He'll only pine without you. Thanks. Robin, that was our first loot, and you've just given it back. What sort of merry man are you? A kind one? The sheriff ran back to the castle, but what was he gonna say? He should have captured Robin Hood. Instead, he'd run away. And there were 25 of them easily, probably more like 30. And we were wading into them, and there were bits of them flying to left and to right. And I've got this really massive one in this agonizing headlock. King John grew dark and broody as he listened to the sheriff's lies. He had to catch this Robin Hood and cut him down to size. Then Robin Flipping Hood appears out of nowhere, lets fire this absolutely deadly volley of arrows and pyo, 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 pins me to a tree. I tore the tree up by its roots, of course, and tried to carry on, but it was no use. Then in a flash, King John devised a plan supremely good. He'd have some entertainment and he'd finish Robin Hood. Stop blathering, idiot. You've got a job to do. I want 3,000 posters handwritten, and I want them by first thing on St Elvis's day. But that's tomorrow. That's right. So get some ink, some parchment, and a very large feather, and start writing! King John and the Sheriff of Nottingham are pleased to announce the World Archery Championships. First round, first leg. Prize, a solid silver arrow in attractive mahogany veneer setting. Place, the village of Worksop. Day, St Elvis's Day, 1195 AD. Open to all. P.S. Robin Hood won't turn up his rubbish. He means me, doesn't he? He's talking about me. Yep. He thinks I'm not going to go. Yep. But he's jolly well wrong, isn't he? Nope. I jolly well am. I'm the most brilliant archer in the world. I'll win easily. Look what I did to the sheriff's hat. Robin, it's a trap. Even an idiot can see that, can't they, Rabies? Can they? The moment you turn up, the sheriff will recognise you. And once you're recognised, you'll be hung from the nearest thing they hang people from. But I've always wanted a silver arrow in attractive mahogany veneer setting. It'll look lovely on my coffee table. You're not going. Wait a minute. Who's the leader of this gang? I am. And I'm telling you, you're not going. Understand? Of course. We wouldn't want the great Robin Hood to be, you know, recognised, would we? And I'd also like to say a big thank you to the sponsors of today's events, Perkin Warbecks, makers of high-class torture equipment, to the royal family who donated this marvellous... Marvellous prize! And finally, many thanks to you, my dear subjects, for having travelled the length and breadth of England to witness today's exciting competition in this sunshine paradise. Thank you!
king will now meet the competitors. Looks as though he's not coming, sire. Nonsense! He's here already. I can almost smell him. Here they are, sire. Uh, so they are. So they are. Name? Teasel, sire. And where do you come from, Teasel? Epping Forest, sire. Uh, good luck, Teasel. Name? Clough, sire. Where do you come from, Clough? Nottingham Forest, sire. Uh, well, good luck, Clough. He's here somewhere. I know it. You know, no doubt brilliantly disguised in order to fool us, but one of these archers is Robin Hood. Name? Robin, sire. And where do you come from, Robin? Sherwood Forest, sire. Ah. Uh, oh, well, good luck, Robin. Wait a minute! Did you say your name was Robin? Oh, no, sire. Robert. Definitely Robert. Robert, the incredible chicken, sire. <sighs> He's here somewhere, I know it. And when I find him, I'll kill him. When I find him, I'll kill him. Sneaking off like that when the rest of us are doing the washing up. What a toad. Little Ron, search that hut. It's not even as though he's any good with a bow and arrow, is it? He couldn't hit an elephant in a barrel. No one there? OK, try that one. So now we've got to risk our necks rescuing him. Well, it's perfectly obvious we're falling into a trap. No one. Right, try those two. You mark my words. There'll be soldiers hidden all round this village just waiting for the signal. No. OK. Rabies, try that one. Look! Norman's behind that car. He's not here. Well, where on earth is he? So now it gives me great pleasure to declare the competition open. <laughs> and let the firing commence. And on the hockey, we have our first competitor, the crafty Cockney, Eric the Newt Teasel from Epping Forest. And remember, the competitor with the highest score in three darts wins our magnificent silver arrow. Come on, Eric, my son. Your best of order, please, gentlemen. Game on. Eleven. Nineteen. That's thirty-six for Eric the Newt Teasel. And the next archer from the village of Ambridge. Psst, Gladys! Hey, man, how are you doing? You seen Robin? Who? You know, Robin the Bigot. Robin the Twit. Robin the Totally Stupid. Never seen him before in my life. Yes, you have, Gladys. The tall one with the pimple problem who thinks he's so flash and brave, but is actually an incredible chicken. Oh, the incredible chicken. Oh, him over there. And now our final competitor, Robert the Incredible Chicken. Are you nervous, Robert? Oh, not really, Sheriff. Uh, taking each arrow as it comes. Uh, I'm fit, I've worked hard, and it's just down to me now to go out there and, you know, get a result. So, you're confident? Quietly confident, yes, Sheriff. So there we have it, Robert the Incredible Chicken, quietly confident as he attempts to beat today's high score of 46, set by Mad Clem the Totally Useless of Brixton Forest. And he's off. I'm holding the arrows adjacent to the right ear, and that the flight of the arrows resting comfortably on the right palm. Oh. 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 right palm. Oh. 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 You have won yourself an all-expenses-paid trip to my dungeons. You have won yourself a luxurious meal every day for the rest of your life, consisting of one wormy biscuit and a glass of pond water. Oh, and not to mention the one year's free trial on the Perkin Warbeck GTI torture machine. You stupid, incompetent chicken! I'll make you wish you'd never been laid. Guards, seize him! <laughs> Me. Clear off the competition!
competition's over. Excuse me, I haven't had my turn yet. You don't get a turn. Now be off, foolish slip of a child. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Very regal. What's it say on your posters? Open to all. Well, I'm all and I want my go. Stop your foolish tittle tattle girl! Go back to your kitchen! Huh. Kitchen? Kitchen? I hate blokes like that. They make me really cross. Sixty! Oh. Really mad! Oh. One hundred and twenty! Totally furious! <laughs> that makes me the winner, I think. I'll get back to my kitchen now, shall I? Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> of course! <laughs> I congratulate you. Thank you very much. I said you'd come in disguise. I said you'd be the last person we'd expect. <laughs> you were clever, but not quite clever enough. Robin Hood! Robin Hood? I'm not Robin Hood. You see, Robin, you made one small mistake. You have no arrows left, but I have this. <laughs> no! It's you who made the mistake, Mr Cleverclogs. I'd hate to return my prize so soon after winning it, but I'm prepared to make the sacrifice if necessary. Guards, release that chicken or your king dies. And don't try anything fancy. You're surrounded. Little Ron, do try to concentrate. Thanks for the entertainment. We'll be leaving now. Oh, and remember, one false move and a solid silver arrow will embed itself into some rather disgusting rolls of royal fat. <laughs> It was Robin Hood. He was dressed as a lady. Well, go and find him. And when you found him, you know what to do. Right. He asked for it, didn't he? Right. So, give it to him. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> we made it! Brilliant! Our first skirmish. Our first victory. And our first loot. This is the best St Elvis's day I've had for ages. And what's more, we got clean away. Gotcha, Robin. She's not Robin. I am. Gosh, you certainly are a master of disguise, aren't you? One tries. You asked for it, didn't you? Oh, dear. Did I? And I'm going to give it to you. Oh, no. And what's more, I'm going to give you his little water bowl as well and a little bone and some little tins of dog food. Pardon? And the elastic band that makes him bounce up and down. <laughs> Here you are. It's all right. The sheriff told me to give it to you. I bet he did. Bye. Happy St Elvis's Day. Bye. Oh, what a nice man that sheriff is. He's really, you know, what's the word? Don't ask, Robin. Just don't ask. Marian, why don't you carry on with what you're doing? Oh, oh. 